So I want to sort of reach back tonight and invoke a vanished tradition, get to the heart of it, and try to show how we can bring this forward in our lives to empower hope in the most dark of situations, and in fact to even make these dark situations the raw material of a clearer, stronger hope than might ordinarily be the case. We are all luminous beings. Why then do we not appear before each other radiant in our illumination? And this is the conundrum of life. This is the problem. You've heard me say many times, we have the vision, we have the money, we have the technology, but why can we not then appear before each other as radiantly luminous beings? Why is perfection so distant? Well, what I've learned from life and vegetables and travel and books can be summed up in two Greek words. It's the central message of, of the philosopher Heraclitus. And he was always my favorite philosopher, but whenever I would read about him, he was called the crying philosopher. And I had to live to be 44 years old to understand the poignancy of Heraclitus' message. He said, in a nutshell, Pontic Rea all flows, all flows. Nothing lasts, nothing is permanent. And this is the hardest message life has to teach. Because what it says is, your joy is transient, your anguish is transient, your fortune, your home, your dream, your moments of great uh, ecstasy, your moments of great insight, your moments of great empowerment, everything is flowing through your hands at the moment that you are aware of it. What is the price of experience? Is it bought for a song or wisdom for a dance in the street? No, it is bought with all that a man has. His wife, his home, his children. Now this is not a pessimistic message, and William Blake was not a pessimistic guy. He was the same guy who told us that if we could but cleanse the doors of perception, we would perceive the world as it is, infinite in a grain of sand that we had to leave the narrow confines of 20th century thinking. And we had to reach back into the byways of human thought that have been, by most of us, somewhat passed over and forgotten. Everything occurs in the presence of its opposite, and out of that there is generated the friction, the heat, and the light that all comes together in an indissoluble package as part of life. Alchemy, as I'm sure many of you know, is really the secret tradition of the redemption of spirit from matter. But many of you may imagine that alchemy is simply a a discredited pre-scientific obsession of unbalanced minds interested in changing base metals into gold, lead into the stuff of commerce. This is the benighted reputation that alchemy has acquired in a century so given over to the literal and the material and the non-spiritual 
that it's lost all touch with the adumbrations of meaning that vibrate behind uh, the perceptions of the alchemists. It is the burning primary reality that lies behind the dross of appearances. The hermetic philosophers drew back from the rise of Christianity with its doctrine of the fall of man and original sin and the stain of Adam and Eve and that whole thing and took a different tack and made two points which I think we need to recover and live out for ourselves. And the first point was that man, which means men and women, human beings, are divine beings. Not lower than the angels, higher than the angels. The message of the alchemical and hermetic thinkers and the Corpus Hermeticum actually uses the phrase, man is God's brother. We have no idea what it would mean in our own lives if we could throw off the notion of ourselves as fallen beings. We are not fallen beings. When you take into your life the gnosis of the light-filled vegetables, the psychedelic plants that have stabilized the same societies of this world for millennia, the first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and light and you will return to those realms. 